Irmaka de Carasa, yo no me ande, quiero pai. Ay, yo no me gracia, sende con. Ay, yo no me gracia, sende, quiero de con. Ay, yo no me gracia, rico, bad, quiero gracia, un don. Goyo no me aquí, oro griante, quiero gracia, oro bacay, quiero gracia, un don. Goyo no me aquí, oro gracia, oro gracia, un don. E no haya caya no me ande con, y el rod paya caya no me ande con, y el rod me ande rod pay, haya caya no me ande con, haya no me ande con, y el rod me ande rod pay, haya no me cargas en dan, haya no me cargas en dan. Oh, yo no me cargo sin dan. Oh, yo no me ande, quiero ir a ande. Quiero ir a ya no me ande con. 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 Welcome, old friends, and new to Spiritual Conversations with Keller and the Ancients, divine spiritual beings seconded to Earth to assist in the evolution of humanity. Embark with us on a journey of self-discovery that will spark within thought-provoking concepts and truths. My name is Dallas Beckett, friend, team member, and facilitator for this time with Keller and the Ancients, and here with me today is the channel for Keller and the Ancients, spiritual writer Kim, and divine spiritual channel scribe, artist, seer, and celestial empathic healer, Amy. And today's episode is about empaths and empathic healers overload. So there have been a few incidents recently in which due to the continued shifting of the Earth's vibration to higher levels, empathic gifts have activated in individuals. Owing to a lack of knowledge and no skill set, events surrounding these activations have been traumatic and less than desirable for all concerned. As a result, we wish to bring to the consciousness of all further information on the empathics, their purpose, how they function, and the form an empathic activation and overload can take. We do expect that with the vibration of the earth continuing to rise, there will be further activation of those who carry within their makeup the gifts of the empath and the empathic healer. An empathic episode in severe cases can appear like a mental health issue or breakdown. We are not negating the need to seek professional help if you find yourself or someone you love suffering in this way. But what we seek to accomplish today is to educate you on the spiritual and subtle energetic influences that impact upon the mental and emotional stability of someone who is gifted as an empath or an empathic healer or someone who has had lifetimes of old trauma in their system and who is awakening to the higher order of existence. It is the misconception of many to believe that the soul exists in the physical body. It does not. The physical body exists in the soul, and the soul is eternal and holds all experiences across many lifetimes. And in this time of earth elevation, the influence of the soul on the personality is growing. Divine Spirit has always said the personality is fleeting. It can and will change. It is the soul that is in charge, and as we all move through this evolutionary phase of humanity, this truth is being made more and more manifest on the physical plane as souls align with their purpose and seek wholeness in line with the higher vibrations that now exist on the earth grid. All lower vibrations, unresolved past life experiences, including soul connections and trauma held within the soul makeup, are activating due to the elevation of these higher vibrations. And as some of you may already know, the soul exists in the now. There is no past, no future, there is only the now. Therefore, in these times of awakening, of a being feeling the increasing influence of the soul energy on their everyday lives, all that is unresolved in the soul is being experienced in the now, whether through conscious knowledge of the higher order of existence, through the activation of gifts such as clairvoyance, clairsentience, etc., increased fatigue, inexplicable feelings of anxiety, depression, fear, and so on. 
For those that are empathic or empathic healers, the lower vibrations and trauma in their own soul history and in that of others can be overwhelming and can lead into extreme experiences that manifest on the physical reality as mental and emotional instability and mental and emotional breakdowns. These episodes can be violent, abusive, etc. However, things are not always what they seem. So Amy, you talk about these energies servicing in an individual's makeup. What does that actually feel like? Well, this is a topic that obviously I'm very familiar with. <laughs> so one of the ways that it can uh, impact is it can actually feel like a bus hitting you. It can actually feel like a physical hit, but on the energetic level. Um, and so you can imagine if you've had lots of these hits throughout the day, that you can actually end up feeling a little bit energetically beaten up, actually. Um, it can also feel like a river running through you. The energy that you are working with, the energy that's impacting on you, can actually feel like you've got a river of energy running through you. And you may even physically vibrate with that. Sometimes it might mean that you get really hot, like physically hot, to the point where you break out in a sweat or you feel like you're going to internally combust. So that's another way that it can feel. You can have a level of irritability, like internal irritability, that you can't kind of work out where it comes from, but you can feel this internal stress that you can't actually have an exact reason for. Or it may be that somebody has like irritated you a little bit, but then it, it's so much bigger than that. And it is actually because, even at a conscious level, if you're not aware of it, it's actually because with being empathic or empathic healer or even being just sensitive and clairsentient is that you are feeling that subtle energetic pressure that's coming from that energy that is not needing to be worked with or is impacting on you. You can have emotional or physical outbursts that are out of proportion with the initial trigger. Your emotional and your mental well-being can be such that you feel a little bit like you're doing somersaults in the ocean and you don't know which way's up or down, depending on the degree of subtle energetic impaction or energy that you're working with or that has, has come into your system. Um, you can also be extremely fatigued, and this happens a lot with sensitives and empaths and empathic healers that go into large congested places like malls and things like that, is that you can feel so tired that you're at the point that you feel like you can't keep your eyes open. Overloads can also manifest on the physical plane. So it may be a subtle energetic thing that's affecting you, but you it may manifest as things like headaches or migraines or sore stomachs, nausea, digestive issues. And, and just to say again that once that subtle energy that's not you know quite right or that you're having to work with has been cleared, those physical symptoms will actually dissipate, you know, if that's the cause of it, you know. In extreme cases, particularly when an empath system is broken, the overload may manifest with the empath actually having a rage or feeling like completely mentally unbalanced and broken inside and having like a complete breakdown and crying and not understanding why they are and, and things like that. So there's a lot of different ways that it can impact and it's about knowing those different ways that it impacts for you if you are empathic and an empathic healer. An empath and empathic deals with energetic congestion and impaction. So Kim, how do you know the difference between that and what people would call mental illness? It's really simple. As soon as the energy is cleared, from around the empath or empathic healer, as soon as it's been cleared from their systems, they return to balance in what you would term normality. They will be balanced. It's not an ongoing thing. But it is. it does depend on that energy being cleared, whatever is there being cleared. An empathic episode can ensue when there is an overload to the empath system triggered by an energetic impaction on that system. The degree of the episode can be exacerbated by energies lying on their own soul makeup. Okay, so if they've got trauma within their own system that is unresolved or they've got soul impaction traumas sitting there or even um, broken systems, 
it is very difficult to actually get that balance back quickly. It needs to be understood there are different types of impasse and they have different energetic systems according to their purpose, like you've got your earth impasse and they will deal with humans and animals. So an earth impasse can be more orientated to the well-being of an animal than a person, actually. So if they've got a choice between the animal and the person, they might choose the animal. But that's given that that's their energetic makeup. A fully functional empath and an empathic healer whose systems are working at their optimal has the skill set to work properly with their gifts and can not only lead a balanced life, but can also tap into the higher vibrations of earth. They can feel joy, love and peace to a far greater degree, I would say, than a person just, you know, living their daily lives because they can tap into those higher vibrations that actually exist on the earth plane all around them. It's when they have that impact from the negativity that they're throwing off balance. What's the best way, Amy, to help an empath or empathic healer to come back into balance then? That's a really, really good question. Um, I just wanted to add a little bit to the to the previous question about how, as empaths and empathic healers, that you actually have that higher ability to actually tap into those higher vibrations. And it is absolutely true. It doesn't mean that you don't feel the lower ones, but it means that you actually learn through your gift to actually hold both in balance. So... When you actually get to the point that you start mastering your gift, it is very easy to come back into balance when you are actually impacted because you already have that reserve there of being able to tap into those higher vibrations. And the universe is all about balance. And for empaths and empathic healers, that is the thing that they need to get to is actually coming to that point where they understand the balance of the universe and that if there is sorrow, there is joy. That if there is is grief there is also togetherness that if there is um, happiness you know sadness that if there is anger there is also peace you know it is actually they it is experiencing life in full color and so that would be my first one of the first things is that it's about recognizing that the universe is a place of balance and as much as you feel that negative Um, emotion and vibrations going on in the world you have the capacity to hold and feel all the positive as well and that's really important to know because you can get a bit overwhelmed and feel like that's not the case but it actually is it is about knowing how you work it is about being able to tap into those higher subtle energies and it is about being able to actually recognize how your gift works for your good and for the good of others It's also vital when dealing with anyone that's having an empathic overload experience that any individuals that are working with them remain calm and balanced because any kind of negative emotional response, even if somebody is having an empathic overload where maybe they're raging or they're crying and that person is impatient with them or, you know, is is not happy with the way that they are um, overloading, any kind of negative emotional responses will impact on the empath and empathic healer because they're not only having to deal with the subtle energy that's come in and impacted on them and the original energies that have triggered this episode but they're actually having to filter the emotions of those around them. So it's really, really important for those that are in a situation where they have somebody like this in their life or they are working with somebody like that, that they remain truly calm in their subtle energy body and and at peace. In extreme cases, when an empath or an empathic healer is in the middle of an overload, it can be extremely uncomfortable and even painful, even physically painful for you to touch them, depending on the energies that you're carrying in your makeup, because it can make it worse, because they will feel whatever's going on with you. So check in and make sure that your energy is clear and check with them that it's okay to touch them. The next thing is energy hygiene. You know, I cannot stress enough how important it is for empaths, empathic healers, for those that are family members and those that are support people to create an energetic shield 
around yourself and around the empath or the empathic healer that you're dealing with because it will help insulate them from further impaction. Um, and there is actually a space on our website, a quick link to those transformative filters and transformative shields. Another important thing is to create a safe space for them to actually melt down. You know, if they are having to filter an energy, then they're going to have to filter it no matter what. And you can make it as comfortable that it flows as easily as possible if you create a space where they're safe, they're not going to be interrupted, where you know, it, it's going to be a relatively calm, subtle energy environment for them to be able to filter through that. Come from a place of love and compassion and allow yourself to be that conduit for divine energy to flow to that person. Remember what I said before about that the empath and the empathic healers can feel the negative, but they can feel the positive just as strongly. So if you're coming from a space of love and compassion and being that conduit, not only do you actually create an energy that they can actually anchor into in the storm of what's going on for them, but you actually create an energy that is healing as well because there is nothing more healing and transformative than pure divine love. If there is clear earth, like as in your ground, get their shoes off and get them outside if you're able to onto the earth so that Mother Gaia can actually help them filter the energies. You know, trees in particular are really amazing filters for empaths and empathic healers and, and being able to filter those energies. But you need to make sure it's a healthy tree. You need to make sure it's quite a strong, big tree so that it's actually capable of performing that task. And then make sure that you give thanks to Mother Gaia afterwards. It's really important, particularly for those that are newly activating, you know, because they're not going to fully when they're in the middle of that empathic storm, they're not going to be able to fully be aware. You know, they it, it, you get caught up in it and it completely overwhelms you. So it's really important that they have that calm, centered, loving person there who can say to them, you know, this is not who you are. I know this isn't who you are. I know that this is going to be okay. We're going to breathe through this and you're going to be okay on the other side of this. It's really important to have that kind of support there. And in order to help them with that, you can practice conscious breathing with them. You know, take them through it and remind them that the energy can flow out, that they are the filter, they are the river. So be the river and allow that energy to flow out. I think a really big thing is that any empath or empathic healer and a lot of the ones that we've come across and treated have had damaged systems and they do need to be repaired and they usually need further uh, subtle energetic training in order to be able to be empowered to be able to work with their gift efficiently. Um, there is a little bit of informational help out there and we do have a YouTube on impasse and that's got a lot of information in there. So that's one place people can go. The other thing is that soft lighting, meditative music that's coming from a, a pure source can also create a subtle energetic vibration that can help. But again, it depends on the um, impaction and what's actually happening for that for the empath and empathic healer, whether that, ener that energy of that music is going to be appropriate. And following an empathic overload, because the empath and the empathic healer is working, doing a lot of work at a subtle energetic level, the empath and the empathic healer are going to be very depleted afterwards. Even when they come out of it and they're okay, they're going to need something to eat and something to drink because they've actually used a lot of subtle energetic energy to actually go through that process. Kim, a question for you. What things or circumstances exacerbate the potential of empathic overload episodes? Well, as Amy's already said, broken energetic systems within the empath themselves. Soul history of the empath or the empathic healer that is traumatic and has been to the point of trigger unrecognized or uh, unhealed and it suddenly excavates in their makeup that can truly exacerbate the overload. External stresses in life of the empath or empathic healer, uh, this would include relationship breakups, uh, work pressure, accidents, hormonal changes, 
However, when all these have been dealt with, the incident of overloads decreases quite significantly. Alcohol consumption, um, we cannot stress this enough. When alcohol is consumed to the point where it affects the subtle energetic body or makeup of an individual, it becomes an open doorway for lower vibrations. And then the empath kind of absorbs all that. They absorb it from actually partaking in the alcohol, but they also absorb it from all those around them that are, um, have their doorways open because of that consumption of alcohol. Recreational drugs would be a definitely no. They are so hazardous to an empath or empathic healer, to a sensitive, being around people who take drugs, that would be definitely detrimental to them because they would absorb the drug into their being. And we had a, just, we'll just take alcohol for an example. I remember we had a client that went to a big Mardi Gras where there was a lot of alcohol and things like this and this empath never ever took alcohol. But because they weren't, adequately shielded and they hooked into the mass consciousness they started behaving as if they were drunk <laughs> so that's how absorption happens it's like if you if you took a clear glass of water and then you put a, a dye in it say the dye is an outside external energy and then the dye goes into the water very soon the whole water is discolored isn't it it's the same color as the dye well, it's kind of the same principle of absorption. Toxic relationships of any kind are very detrimental to an empath or empathic healer and can lead to overloads because they absorb the energies from their from the person they have the relationship with and they absorb it into their systems and then they can have quite severe consequences sometimes. Sometimes it is just a struggle day by day, but then sometimes it can be um, quite dramatic. Loud, crowded and energetically congested environments are always um, problematic because, again, they're absorbing those energies from all around them. I think they would be the main things that I can think of at this point. So, Amy, what is the most important thing that an empath or empathic healer can do to help themselves then? This is also a really good question. I think the first thing is definitely recognition. It's actually recognition and acceptance of who and what you are. Um, that you are an empathic or empathic healer and that this is something that is a gift that you carry and that it's something that you know you are going to need to learn to work with and to work with in a way for your good and for the good of others. You know, it, it's a call to service in, in a lot of ways, having this gift. Discernment about who you want to give your time and your energy and your gift to. You know, if you are around a lot of toxic people and it's constantly exhausting you, you constantly have to cl having to clean yourself up from this and those people are not actually making the choice to evolve or grow or change or use the energy, but are actually using you just as an energetic rubbish bin, that is not a good use of your gift, and it's not a good use of your time, and it's not actually valuing who you are and what you've come here to do. So there, it, it, it does require discernment to actually be able to look after yourself, but also be able to, you know, be out in the world and be doing what you what your soul came here to do, carrying this gift in the world at this time. The next thing that would be the most important is strengthening your connection to the divine. You know, have a daily practice every day. Something that you do where you do maybe do your energy hygiene setups and you actually have that time where you connect with the divine, the divine that made you, the divine that actually made you and gave you this gift to work for the betterment of yourself and for everybody. So it's really important to build that connection to the divine because a strong connection to the, the divine is your calm in the center of the storm. If you are an empathic, an empathic healer and you're overwhelmed by energies and you feel like you're in the middle of a storm and you're looking for that calm, you're not going to find it unless you grow that connection to the divine because you are the calm. That connection to the divine is the calm in the midst of the storm. 
and everything is going to go much easier for you if you are able to do this for yourself. Daily meditation, obviously, and a practice of connecting to higher vibrations. Like I said, you can feel lots of the negative, but you feel lots of the positive too. So build that reservoir of being able to connect to the positive vibrations, whether it's taking a moment to feel the breeze on your face and rejoicing in it, whether it's feeling the the sun, you know, shining on the flowers, whether it's, you know, maybe you, you love flowers and you have flowers in your home and that's something that gives you joy and you bring that joy in and you grow it and you connect with it and you start choosing things in your life that actually grow those higher vibrations because it's very important, it creates the balance. Energy hygiene, again, cannot stress enough. Daily shielding, transformative filters, clearing your spaces and places that you go to. The Keller and the Ancients Coming Home CD is a vital tool and it can help you a lot with being able to clear those things that impact on you. It is a choice and a determination to work with your gift and to heal what lies within your own makeup. You know, close as many doors as possible so that when energies come, they can filter through really efficiently. They don't get stuck. And there's no key then that fits the lock for the energies that ride into your system. You know, the more self-healing you do, the more that you're going to able to just let those energies flow. And when you've done enough self-healing, you know, and there's always more to do, of course, but when you've done enough self-healing, most of the energies that you work with will flow through your system without you even realizing that they're doing it. It actually is an empath and an empathic healer that's functioning fully and has been working on healing themselves. It's an easy thing to do. You know, it's not difficult. Uh, the reason it gets difficult is because there's, you know, damaged systems or self-healing that needs to be involved or just the knowledge of energy hygiene and how to look after yourself. It is a choice and a determination to work with your gift, you know, because if you don't have that key, then many of the energies won't come into your system and stick to it. They'll just flow straight through. Develop a strong sense of self-worth and self-love, self-value and deep compassion and let go of judgments. One of the first things that Spirit actually taught me as an empathic healer was about the judgment because I'm a Virgo and I was very <laughs> analytical and um, and had, you know, always had that struggle between judgment and discernment. And, you know, when you've got an energy coming at you and it's quite negative and it's something traumatic, your automatic thing is to go into the negative. And it is about recognizing that every soul on this planet has actually had a life beyond this planet, that we are eternal beings and that this is a moment in time. So there is no judgment. This is all learning. And so let go of judgments because that's something else that will get the energy stuck. And the other thing, because you are working in such a big way, empaths and empathic healers, it's really important to self-nourish and one of the things you can do is create kind of a symbolic cave if you like in which you can retreat to and that may look like something different for every different empath and empathic healer what that cave is but create your symbolic cave you know so that when the energies of the world get too much and you've kind of hit the wall with the work that you're doing and it's time to restore and nurture yourself that you have created a space to go to. You've been listening to Spiritual Conversations with Keller and the Ancients. Join us again in two weeks' time, and don't forget this and previous episodes of Spiritual Conversations with Keller and the Ancients are available as a podcast from freshfm.net, iTunes, and the Access Internet Radio app.